I chose to study plant parasites because the parasites that infect people, they're just really horrible. And the prospect of spending my career sipping through people's poo really didn't appeal. <laughs> Plus, I'm interested in researching the interaction between a parasite and its host immune system. And for this, there's really no need to study people, because although you might not be aware, plants actually have an immune system too. And when you think about it, this actually makes a lot of sense, because just consider how many parasites a plant is exposed to every single day. The air is full of fungal spores, the soil has bacteria and nematodes, and that yet when you look around outside, most plants are actually really healthy. And this is because the plant's immune system is really effective at protecting plants against most parasites. So let's take a look at how this plant immune system works and what happens when a parasite tries to infect a leaf cell. <coughs> so if we take the example of a fungal parasite, this battle between the plant and the parasite begins when a fungal spore lands on a leaf. This spore is going to germinate, penetrate through the leaf surface, and it's here in the apoplast of the plant cell that the parasite meets the front line of the plant defense response. And that front line comes in the form of chitinases. And these chitinases are enzymes, and they're going to chew up bits of the parasite cell wall into smaller pieces. These smaller pieces of the parasite cell wall are then recognized by specific receptors in the plasma membrane. And when one of these receptors recognizes the presence of the parasite cell wall, it sets off alarm bells in the cell. And this triggers a whole range of complex defense reactions. The end result of these defense reactions is the production of toxic compounds. These toxic compounds are transported from the cytoplasm of the cell out to where the parasite is trying to infect, and the parasite will be killed. So most of the time, when a parasite tries to infect a plant cell, it is the plant that wins the battle, thanks to this immune response. However, just like sometimes your immune system fails, and you can get infected with a cold or a flu virus, the same thing can happen in plants. And every plant has certain parasites that its immune system just can't kill. Here at Wait, we're researching parasites of grapevine. And grapevine is a crop of huge economic importance to South Australia. And one of the, the parasites that grapevine's immune system can't kill is a parasite called Erysiphe nicata. This is a fungal parasite, and it causes powdery mildew disease. Now, any of you who are keen gardeners have probably come across powdery mildew, mildew disease before, particularly if you tried growing roses or strawberries or cucumbers. And whilst it's the same disease that forms on lots of different plants, it's actually being caused by different species of parasite. So on grapevine, Erysiphe nicata can infect both the leaves and the berries. And even just low levels of powdery mildew disease are enough to have severe effects on both the yield and the quality of the wine of the berries, which will have an effect on the quality of the wine production. Now, there's a group in America that had berries made out of, uh, made wine, sorry, out of berries that were infected with powdery mildew disease and got people to taste this wine and to describe the flavors that they could taste in it. And apparently, people could taste things like Band-Aids and an old lady's handbag. In <laughs> I have no idea what that would actually taste like, but it definitely doesn't sound good. So, but this powdery mildew disease, in addition to downy mildew, which is caused by a different parasite, costs the Australian wine industry $140 million every single year. So why isn't Erysiphe nicata just killed by grapevine's immune system, like lots of other parasites are? Well, this is because Erysiphe nicata and grapevine have been co-evolving with each other for millions of years. And during this time, the parasite has developed some highly specialized weapons, and it uses these weapons to fight back against the attack of grapevine's immune system. And the weapons that the parasite has are a series of proteins called effectors. And you can think of effectors as hundreds of tiny ninjas that the parasite secretes into the plant cell. So these ninjas are going to target multiple components of grapevine's immune system. And when one of these ninjas has targeted a different plant, plant pathway, it is then going to reprogram it. And this reprogramming of plant pathways by these ninjas 
acts to block both the production and the transport of these toxic compounds. So this means that the parasite isn't killed. So thanks to secreting these ninjas into the plant cell, it means that this time the parasite can win the battle. So if the plant, if grapevine, isn't able to defend itself against the parasite, then this means that growers need to intervene. And growers need to intervene to kill the parasite to prevent an outbreak of powdery mildew disease. And the growers will kill uh, the parasite by applying huge amount of fungicides. This level of fungicide application, most vineyards are sprayed six to seven times every single season. And this is going to have a huge economic cost because these pesticides are expensive. But more importantly, there is an environmental cost. You have residues entering the air, they can remain on the berries or enter the watercourses that stay in the soil. And, and recently, there's an increasing amount of attention being paid to the potential health risks of these pesticides. So clearly, we need to find an alternative way of killing the parasite without having to use quite so much chemical control. And to find this alternative, we can look again to the plant's immune system. Because whilst the ninjas that the parasite secretes are really awesome, plants haven't survived on Earth for so long without a few tricks of their own. And a small number of plant species have evolved a series of genes called resistance genes. And these resistance genes are pretty much the superhero of the plant, plant defense response. Because as part of this specific co-evolution that occurs between a plant and a parasite, some of these resistance genes have evolved to recognize the ninjas that the parasite secretes. And when one of these resistance genes recognizes the presence of a ninja, it triggers a defense response so strong that it not only kills the parasite, like that first level of defense response, but it also kills the plant cell that the parasite is trying to invade. So these resistance genes are a brilliant way of restoring the ability of the plant's immune system to kill the parasite without us having to use chemicals. And these resistance genes are normally found in wild plant species because unlike the plants that we have cultivated for agriculture, wild plant species have a lot more genetic variation and this increases the chances of this ninja recognition occurring. So other researchers in my lab have identified one of these resistance genes that recognizes Erysiphrina carta's um, ninjas, and they found that in a wild species of grapevine from North America. And whilst, whilst this wild grapevine species is brilliant because it's resistant to the parasite, its berries produce really terrible wine. So what we need to do is move this resistance gene from the wild plant species into a cultivated variety such as Shiraz. And this gene is moved through traditional plant breeding. So after several generations and many crosses, my lab has developed a new grapevine variety. Uh, this variety is mostly Shiraz. It produces really excellent wine, but the leaves also have, the plant rather, also has this superhero resistance gene. And there are plans to re release this variety and grow it commercially. So by breeding in, in these resistance genes from wild plant species into cultivated ones, we can give the power back to the plant and enable the plant to kill the parasite without us having to use lots of chemical control. And this strategy is really effective. It's used for lots of different crop species against lots of different types of parasites. But there is a problem with this plan because parasites are able to evolve much faster than plants can. And so when the parasite is going through its life cycle and then go in multiple rounds of reproduction, random mutations will get introduced into the ninjas. Most of these mutations aren't going to have any effect. They're what we call silent mutations. But occasionally, a mutation will arise in that specific ninja that's recognized by its specific resistance gene. And this mutation is going to cause the ninja to change in structure. And once this ninja has changed in structure, it will no longer be recognized by the resistance gene. And this means that when the parasite infects, that explosive level of defense response isn't going to be triggered. So once again, the parasite has adapted. Oops. <laughs> and this means that, again, it's the parasite that wins the battle. Now, this adaptation by the parasite has major consequences if you have a vineyard and all of, the vine all of the plants in the vineyard have been bred to contain this resistance gene. 
because initially, all those individual parasites, most of them will still have the original ninja. So most of the parasites in the field are still going to be killed by the resistance gene. However, the small number of individuals that have this new penguin ninja, they're going to survive and they're going to reproduce. And eventually, you'll end up with a new population of parasites in the vineyard, and none of the parasites will be killed by the resistance gene. And that means, although a lot of time and money is spent in breeding these um, resistant varieties and replanting your entire vineyard, you, the grower is once again dependent on chemical control. But this is okay, because we have the solution to this problem. And that's to make sure that when you're breeding the plants, they don't just have one superhero resistance gene, but they have two. And the second resistance gene is going to recognize a different ninja within the same parasite. Because that way, even if the first resistance gene fails to recognize a ninja, the second resistance gene, they're still going to recognize their ninja in the parasite, and the parasite is still going to be killed before you have this emergence of the new population. So here at Wait, we're researching every aspect of this plant-parasite interaction. Because it's only by understanding how this complex and dynamic interaction is occurring at the tiny cellular level that we can begin to control these parasites out in the field in a way that uses less um, pesticides, less chemical control, but remains durable for many years to come. Thank you. <laughs>